I think we're going to, which is going to come out naturally. So I'm going to do a countdown. Yeah. A three, two, one. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do probably like a bit of a, a heavy. I can actually, I can actually record it at another time if you like, if you don't want to hear it. Oh, it's fine. I was also thinking the other day that um, I, I want to learn a new way to, to tell the story anyway, because it's if I use it to, to really inspire others, I'm okay with using the story, but okay. I just, I'm okay. searching for a new way. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see if I think it's going to be today that we find it. Okay. Three. <laughs> Yay. Three, three, two, two, two. One. <laughs> and welcome to Discover Energy Work. I'm Richard Wicks, and today I have a very special person with me, and it's a very special person for me as well. It's uh, Shanti Shiggs, and I have to tell you the story uh, about a little bit of a background, because to come into this conversation uh, where you come in, um, you, you do really need uh, a background and we've actually even had this interview a few times and we've we've backed out of it and we've listened to it and we've reviewed it the, the story of Shanti and where she comes and now what is driving her life I can totally relate to because um, four years ago I lost my daughter and I met Shanti in Thailand and I was in a very, very low place. And you have to imagine that slowly I, I learned what had gone on with Shanti. And I'm gonna give you probably the most dramatic version of that that I can. If you imagine that somebody that you loved over a period of time uh, then got into drugs and, and got into quite, um, I would say quite um, negative uh, behavior and uh, controlling behavior, psychopath, psychopathic behavior. And you'd split up from that person and you meet their mum, who you'd love to pieces. And they come with a grenade and they murder their mother and they murder your child and they try to murder you and then they commit suicide. And, and you can understand, I'd met Shanti about a year after I'd lost my daughter and it was a few months after she'd lost, or she'd gone through this experience. I think I, I can't even, you know, I really realized we can't equate one thing with another in these terms. Um, and, Shanti gave off in the moment that I met her, she gave off a beautiful naturalness and a down to earthness that, yeah, it just drew me very much to her. And when I started to do the discover energy work, of course, I want to talk about energy and feeling vibes and miracles and, and everything else. But energy is also sometimes a very subtle piece that we suddenly find ourselves in. Um, so I have to give you all that background, I feel, to say and introduce Shanti. Shanti, hello. Thank you for coming and joining me on this podcast. Hey, Rich. Thank you for uh, introducing me. And uh, yeah, it is, it is a really uh, painful and horrible story. Um, it was great. Actually, the other day I was reading. In, in, in the book I, I wrote after after the loss as my kind of therapy it was a kind of therapy to me and then I I, I opened the page on your name because I wrote about it uh, I wrote about you as well and I wrote something like I'm sure Richard and me will be friends for life so uh, it was so nice I thought oh, I should really want one day translate this and, and uh, send it to you Aww. because it was such an uh, uh, it was such a heat. And also I wrote there that you were there for two weeks and you left and that I, I missed you already. And, I, and then I said, like, we're, I'm sure we will be friends for the rest of our lives. Yeah. So yeah. Um, for me, it was also really healing to meet you there. And yeah, with a similar story of loss. I, I think um, I think what connects us in a funny way is 
of course, our loss, but I think also the fact that we are prepared to own up and, and be there for our loss so that other people can connect with us. And, you know, yeah. not, we don't hide it. We go like, okay. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what happened. A friend, uh, a friend that I met uh, literally at Christmas this year, 20, 2019 Christmas in Bangkok, he died. He died yesterday. Uh, his girlfriend just messaged me and I, and I texted, I was texting and said, look, I don't know how you feel. I don't know how you feel, but I know there are no words that I, anybody can say to you. And it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like this is real. Like you probably feel this is totally surreal. And all I want to say is I am here. I, I'm just going to be here and you can reach out and talk to me at any time. And, um, yeah, and yeah, you know what I mean? It's a funny thing to say, I don't know how you feel just to even say, if I, somebody said to me, Oh, rich, I know how you feel. I go, fuck, mm. excuse me, I shouldn't say that. I was not allowed to say that. Um, I would say, um, uh, get knotted. Yeah, it's, so I'd say get knotted. It's so important. Yeah, it's so important to just be there, right? And, and, and to also acknowledge that we don't know what they're feeling. And, and because it's, it's every yeah. grief process also is different and well, dealing with it. And it's, uh, yeah. I, I, think, I think in so many ways, grief process is the same. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fascinated because one of the things that I really hated was if people would say, so how are you doing? Because it's like, mm. oh, I'm having about the worst time in my life, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah. It's like when, you, when you're in grief, the worst thing anybody can say is, so, how are you doing? And they mean it like in a nice way. Um, but it's like, I, I've always wanted to, I've always felt that if I got a chance, I should say to people, it's the worst thing. Like asking people to go in and make go in and make a quick um, inventory of their feelings. You know how how well my feelings. for me it was. It actually the grief time the first year was like a magical year to me, and and there was also a lot of tears when I would be on my own sometimes. But mm. giving the tear space really at that moment made also made it able for me to see love and joy a lot and, and connection. But maybe because this was such in such traumatic experience my system maybe also helped me in this way to guide me through yeah. i'm not sure about that but um i don't i don't yeah i think uh well don't you think like the, the baby yeah. baby okay. mother connection because because elfin so elfin is mm. is uh your son's name. my son um yeah. and elfin was a baby and, and really a baby mother connection is is very psychic you know, yeah. it's, it's very about feeling and, um, mm. yeah, yeah, rather than, than actually talking. Mm. You, so. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, and I, I also want to really confirm that every grief process is different and there's no right or wrong way. I mean, uh, mm. uh, it's all, it's all, uh, I think it's the most important thing we can give people in grief is respect, right? And, and their space and, and not tell them how to grieve or whatever, <laughs> because that's, that would be. Yes. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I felt like, I, I felt like, um, well, I had some interesting experiences. So I made, um, I made a journey with myself, um, to to see my daughter to see emma um mm. and it was like going into another it was like a shamanic journey where i went into this other wow. realm and i saw her being taken care of by by spirits and being healed and oh, you know really you. really being and this was with somebody that i'd um so the person that did this was somebody that I knew for a year before and I'd done incredible, wonderful healing work for me with her um, and deep meditation. So I just never experienced anything like before. And then that happened and she said, Oh, you better come, you better come over straight away. Um, you know, today wow. or tomorrow. And, um, and I did those journeys. Um, 
and I felt like I'd experienced spaces of love and beings of love that I hadn't experienced before that were totally outside my, my sphere of uh, normal, normal perception. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. I really feel like shivers everywhere. It's like, uh, that's, that's beautiful because I believe there are many worlds we don't see. Right. And I'm always careful with that because I don't want to end up in those worlds while I'm in this world. You know what I mean? It's like, I want to stay with my both feet on the ground, but on the other hand, these experience can really bring us beautiful insights, I I guess. I, I don't know how that is for you or yeah, feeling that it's, that it's okay. I, I think, um, yeah, there, there was a feeling at the time of, Richard, you've got a choice. You're going to grieve or you're going to let it go. And mm. I wanted to grieve. I was like, you know, you can, you can forgive and let it go and you won't need to grieve. And I felt very strongly that I loved her so much. I wanted to grieve and, I, you know, I grieve forever sort of thing. You know, I grieve and grieve. Yeah, of course, of um, course, yeah. Uh, and but there was something that said it's a choice. It's actually a choice um, mm. whether I grieve mm. or not. And I don't think it was. I yeah, I don't think it was a right or wrong decision. Um, but but you had when we're talking about your experience, what I felt like, and I I probably didn't exp- didn't say it or haven't said it to you but it was like a a peace bomb went off for you in that moment you know that the, yeah, the grenade true. didn't explode thank god you know um but you were catapulted into a very peaceful space you have been telling me yeah it was a really uh at that time i i really i think that saved me in a way I, um to I felt fully present all the time. And also, like I said, after tears, of course, there were tears and there were human emotions. I mean, I didn't become some sort of alien or something with that. But, mm. And I'm quite introverted. So I, crying for me was easier on my own anyway than mm. with people around me, for example. So that's why maybe they did not really see me cry often. Um, but um, after the crying, there, I, I felt many times I felt joy. I really felt a feeling of joy and, 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 and it was quiet in my mind and, and I could see little synchronicities, synchronicities all the time with, with numbers. Uh, mm. My son Elvin was 11 months and 11 days when he passed away and he was born on the 11th of August and his name Elf also has 11 in it in Dutch. Yeah, and it means 11 more in things German with as well. El- uh, elf. elf, yeah. yeah. And, and it's an, an elf, of course, so he... He became right. my little elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna. But he really I'm, did. Yeah. I'm gonna go for the the toughest um, insight, uh, or not say I won't say it's an insight, but it's like um, when you say that you've named your son Elf, you know, eleven, and then Put eleven elf in there. Yeah, elf in. So yes, it, elf in. So eleven. Yeah. It's like eleven e or eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven R, yes. you know, I don't know in, in English if I translate it. So, um, and then eleven months, eleven days, the this child, this love of your life, mm. leaves. And then, yeah. do you feel? I mean, because I and and I've got to say, Shanti, the the question sticks in my throat because I know that sometimes I felt like. This was Emma's journey. Emma's journey mm-hmm. was to go, she, mm-hmm. to, to go when she went, because that is when she went, and that is when she decided to go. And she mm-hmm. did commit suicide, which is, I know it's a different mm-hmm. situation, but that literally um, your, your son is called um, Elfin, and then at 11 months, 11 days, he then also goes. Do you feel? Do you feel like um, that that's a difficult uh, thing to think that it may be predetermined or maybe part of a divine plan? Um, I'm always careful with these things. I see myself um, 
not saying it's not true, but I also don't like to say that it's true because then I point it out and then I'm sure about something. And actually this loss taught me that I'm not sure about anything. So, but, mm. but I, I do ex have experiences and I do sense things. Uh, for example, the connection, which you probably also know with Emma and, and those things are true for me, but I don't have to, um, uh, have a sentence that says that it's true or that it's a fact that it works that way. You know what I mean? And yeah, I like that. Uh, I like that. Cause I can't, I can't, I would always say I'd do anything to make it different. I don't yeah, see that. Exactly. I don't see that I would say, Oh, I just accept it because, because, um, I don't know. It, it's, I've seen a sign that says it's like that. So, you know, I would kill myself. Yeah, no. I would but, kill but myself it, I, so that she could live. I would do that. No doubt. Exactly. Without That's her. also always what I say. I would give my life to bring him back, but I cannot. I don't know a, a, a magician who can bring his life back. So... That's the reason, because it's very black and white, why I do accept it, because then life can continue for me. And, and, and what my ex did was unacceptable, that that will always remain. Um, and still, uh, I choose to go on with life and to make something out of life. And in, in that, that way, I have to um, accept it in a way that it won't eat me. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, I would actually even, I might even word it more strongly that you've taken a life lesson and a life meaning from the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you, can you tell everybody a little bit about that? Well, yeah, also that, um, that I, 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 some some people call it the Disney syndrome, but it's when you're waiting for something or someone outside of you to make your life complete. What we also learn a bit in this society mm -hmm. is when you have the dream partner, the dream house, the big car, uh, anything like external, you're happy. And I also, mm -hmm. from 15 years old, I'm now 32, but from 15 years old till about 28, when I uh, met my ex, I was always looking for like, unconsciously I was either in love or looking for a relationship and um, after this loss um, and this relationship actually I, I'm going a bit back with my ex started as a fairy tale so it all seemed to be like perfect uh, like we could laugh we could talk we, everything was as if it was meant to be as if it really fitted like two pe uh, puzzle pieces fitting together uh, but that was only for a little while. It, it came, be, the relationship became more and more like a nightmare. And of course, it ended in the, in the most undescribable nightmare. So this big lesson in this huge, undescribable loss for me is that I really, really had to learn how to go within and not search for the love outside of me anymore and really find it within. And of course, as a human being, you need others. You live together. Uh, with people and that's lovely and and I, I could not overcome this or overcome I mean I, I would not be here without all my friends and family one of you one of them is you of course meeting you in Kamalaya mm. and and but still I and now I, I don't need anyone to to you know what I mean it's, it's and also for Elfin you, I, you I wrote feel like a it's book. reverse things for you you feel more um yeah, yeah, it brought insights. It brought insights and mm -hmm. and and those insights to go within. I called it after Elfin with the S before. Or his name is the Selfin method, and it's really a way to go within to to also embrace all the shadow sides and the dark sides we all have. And uh, that self love is not about being positive all the time, but rather about self acceptance. That we also embrace the dark days and the Angry, anger emotions or the, 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 the frustration and the sadness because li I believe life is like yin and yang and you know without darkness right. there's no light right yeah, yeah yeah I mean I one thing I, I like about um, you is that you're very down to earth you're just mm -hmm. as likely to um, uh, how can I say if something makes you angry then you know 
you know that you're angry about it. You know, it's, it's just you, you're who you are. Um, you're not trying to um, put on any airs. And um, uh, what what I feel is um, that you'd had this experience of the Disney experience. And really, you've turned it, can I say it's a yen sid? So Disney backwards, you're, you're, uh, you're, mm. you're making it about having a happy beginning rather than having a happy ending. And the Beautiful beginning is, how you say that. the beginning is, you know, just, okay, how am I going to feel about me? How am I going to treat me? Um, and, and, and what you're doing by, by talking about your experience, I mean, do you talk about the, the abuse? Because essentially, you know, I think when you're in, in a relationship with um, somebody who's abusive, abusive, sometimes it's, you don't notice that, that it's becoming abusive um, because it can happen so easily and, and you can start to even blame yourself. Um, but, it, you know, if you're talking about it, you're able to um, warm people. I, I think I've just yeah. a whole load. No, uh, it's, I'm it's, it's really good not sure what I've said. Yeah. No, it's very good what you're saying. It's, it's the, whole, the whole reason why I also felt I had to write a book about it. Is because I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who had a relationship with somebody who is a narcissist. He was really ill and, and, and narcissistic. Um, more mm. towards a psychopath, I think, with a very tra I think also traumatic experience in his uh, youth. Uh, what does um, that mean, narcissistic? I, I mean, what do you want? What do you want to warn people about, like that? Well, for example, what's really um, um, uh, how it goes is in the beginning, it's always like a fairy tale, and they're prince charming or princess charming. I mean, it's not, you know, it can be both sides. Uh, so mm. they 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 really listen. They seem to be your soulmates. It, 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 Prince Charming, he exists. You start to believe. Wow, I didn't know everything. He doesn't. You know, it it, it just feels right. He's I charming, think, I think funny. I think it's called love he, bombing. Yeah. Have you heard of a love, love bombing? bombing. Yeah. Yes. It's, so that's it's what like, it is. So it's like you can't do anything wrong, and it seems like they're perfect as well. It's like, but it's like, you know everything yeah and, it, and that's say is love bombing is such a good it's such a good uh word because you also s would feel s i would in the beginning already i sometimes felt a bit like well i just left the door to my work and i already get poetry that he has written about us and it was in a way cute but sometimes in the beginning it was already like a bit much you know like can i still breathe when i'm on my own or uh, does, do I need to send back all the time because then I was he was a bit insecure and then yeah right right so the the red flags can be um, in the beginning you can often see them already like I, they can I be think so I think if 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 you mm -hmm. feel uh, very close to somebody very quickly for me that's a red flag believe it or yeah. not yeah I, I go yeah. wait wait a minute slow down relationships <laughs> take time people it takes time to, to know people so if you yeah. if you feel like you know them very quickly that's not normal that is that is not normal so slow things down um and um actually love bombing is a term that they use in mind control when they're describing how people get um abducted into cults because they get abducted out of their own free will it's not that somebody says you somebody walking on the street and they hit on the head and pulled into a cult. Not really. Normally they get told that they're perfect and they get every, all their ideas are so wonderful. And then they, they're sort of said, well, yeah, but you know, that friend of yours over there, you, you know, they're not, not so good. Don't see them. And then when they see them, you know, it's no, I'm not happy about that. Oh, but you're perfect, but I'm not happy about that. And then very quickly, that person becomes mm. isolated from their friends. And Isolation, yes. And, and also, um, he also had the tendency to really ask for the love back. 
So when he said, I love you, but he could say it like 10 times a day sometimes, it was really too. Then uh, he really wanted to hear it back at certain points. And it was a, a little, how do you say that when you can't breathe? It's a bit like, oh, it's... Well, that's thought control, isn't it? He actually wants to control what you think and when you think yeah. it. So, yeah, and so then ma manipulate me. And then if I would not do it because I didn't felt it or I didn't want to be forced, then it then I never then I did not de escalate, you know what I mean? So mm. he made the uh, so all those he it was quite smart in a way because I would really start to think about my youth and how would I be in fights and maybe it is something where I can work on so in a smart way and of course it's also always good in relationships to also listen to each other and you know what I mean like um, mm. to to learn from each other's and patterns so you you first when you're in this on this pink cloud and you're in love you, you really want to be open and you want to take an honest look at yourself too I, I think so too. and I think also one of the things that I'm interested in just because this is something I've taken a personal interest in is uh, this mind control aspect so with mind control we often find something which is called in English gaslighting and gaslighting yeah. is when you get people to doubt themselves so they just don't feel they feel like that they said something or they 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 said something and it was taken totally the, the wrong way and 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 um or they hadn't said something like the other the other person had said something to them like uh, something abusive and they said no 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 i never said that that never happened and then they're mm. accused of making it up and so they start to doubt themselves and doubt their own uh, mental stability so they lose a lot of self-confidence yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and also just uh, with uh, I think there's also aggression in the not uh, it doesn't have to be physically but also like what you said with friends and family and they it, the isolation really happens and for example before we w would go to a party of a friend of mine or a family member of mine or we would go and visit like nine out of ten times he would and now at the end, I mean, afterwards, I can see that he did that. And I also wrote about it in the books that he would start to make a fight just before we would go. So that, that really, and then I would really get there in a, in a uh, weird mood. You know what I mean? Like it, a bit scared and a bit, mm. yeah, it was uh, really, um, really, um, I'm still impressed that also you hear a lot more about narcissism and that it really has a sort of road it takes. So for, they start with this and then they do that. They, they, you know, it's it's like, and I really would love to help others who also, had the, well, had the balls to leave a relationship like that because it's very, very difficult to help them um, find self-love again and, and strength and, and self-worth, you know, because you can really... And right. that's also what my ex in the end wanted. Um, he wanted to kill me as well, but I survived. But he somehow, he, he, his sick wish was to break me and then physically. Or, and mm. I felt that that day, he's not, I'm not giving him that. He's not, it's not happening. So, and, and I'm sure if Elfin and Pauline, his grandmother, who died that day as well, if they could see something after that, they really want me to go on and be happy and not um live a bitter life because that's what his illness wanted you know um yeah i mean i uh, i feel um it's mirroring me and I'll, I'll say what i feel it is for me and then i'll say what i think it is for you so for me it was i'm not i'm gonna turn uh emma's suicide into something mm. positive because I'm going to talk about suicide and I'm going to talk about grief and I'm going to talk about death and I'm going to help people because I think it's something that just, I think it could have been avoided if we've talked about it more. And when I, when I think of um, Elfin and, and his gran and, and, um, uh, the, and you, then I think, well, if, if I talk about it, this becomes meaningful and I'm, it means the death, the deaths now are contributing to people living fuller lives and getting out of terrible situations uh, and, and starting to love themselves more and being more and more happy. Do, do you exactly. know what I mean? 
that's exactly it. Yeah, wow, that's same. And also, I mean, also the sad part is okay. Yeah, I mean, sadness also still comes comes up, right? I I mean, uh, I miss them. And also, yesterday it was Mother's Day, and yeah, that's that. that those days are tough. You know, it's not that that you can just say about the biggest loss in your li- loss in your life. You can only make it something positive because it's also, in a way, of course, it's negative and painful still. And yeah. I think within ten years it will be still Mother's Day will be so. But I think in a way that's also the completeness of, of life to, to, to honor that space. And also for people that's who we can speak to. It's like also when we step out of a relationship, of course, we want to go to a happy life and to a life full of self-love and worthiness. But it doesn't mean that there won't be hard days or hard times anymore. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a part of it. Part of uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, mean, so you actually, you've written two books um, and you've, you've actually sort of said, okay, because I mean, I, I, I haven't done, I, I, I did. Yeah. I I wrote, I made mirror me cards, which was talking about amazing. um, uh, Helping people connect with their emotions and, and really name them and feel where they were in the body and then just it's so important yeah and it and i actually i would love i i don't even have them here i think because it's it's such uh, to me sometimes also a search to if you say to people oh just feel and then they're like what what does feel mean anyway and then uh, you know what i mean it's like yeah uh, it's very it's a very important part i think in becoming conscious to become conscious of what feeling is and what emotions are and how to recognize them. So that's amazing. And it's for kids, right? The cards. Uh, uh, yeah. Mirami cards are for kids. And, mm-hmm. and now uh, mind Hong Kong is, is um, translating them into Chinese and English and they're going to wow. bring them out to the schools, but you develop, you've been developing programs and, and doing education as well. Haven't you? You've been like, um, I'm fascinated to know you've been, your main thing is like self love, which is self. You think you call it the self in way, which is using health in health in name yeah. in there, which mm-hmm. is beautiful. Yeah. To really find it within. And, and I mean, I also, um, there are many more like me who, uh, who keep on choosing partners or keep on, you know, uh, and I don't want to say that I'm, that, that it's wrong, but it's just a pattern. And I think it's, uh, we we keep on or I kept on searching the love outside of me and for me there was a lesson also to of course now I I would not go into a relationship or something else after this loss again right away but because this loss was so big I could not escape you know I could not run away I didn't want to run away I had to go within but many Mm. of us at this time also I think in corona and when loss appears or loss of a job, mm. loss of mm. a person mm. you love, anything, it's, yeah, it's helpful to, to, to go within and, and embrace everything there in what we find in ourselves. Yeah. And I mean, we become I, the mates. Yeah. I mean, you're going, going within is, I mean, I just, I just ask, you know, if I think of self love and you said, Richard, okay, I want you to love yourself more in a way. Mm. I just feel like such a failure when, if somebody mm. said that to me, do you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, I'm such yeah. a failure. So, yeah. You know what? And yeah. So, I mean, I'm just, cause I'm just curious about how, how do you approach it? Cause it's obviously kind of like somebody's just really, you might say they totally blaming themselves for being in a wrong relationship. They've already been told convinced by their partner that it, everything's their fault anyway. And then, they get out and somebody who might in an insensitive way say, yeah, well, the problem is you don't love yourself enough. And it's like, mm. no. Um, that's really painful if people say that. Yeah. That's also not true. I believe that's, I think a very, I don't want to use the word really, but it's, it's not the way you want to misuse the word self-love. I think the essence of self-love and I rather also would actually these days call it self-acceptance or self-compassion. Mm. Hmm. because that's it's it more has to do with saying yes to everything within yourself so okay you're at the ground and you have no self-worth and you're you feel bad about yourself and then 
first say that's okay it's okay that I feel this way and then you you're giving yourself the space to maybe climb a bit out of there right but first right it's really important I, I believe too to and, and you know but you know what I go is I, Shanti as I feel that 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 spiritual love that's that's unconditional love towards yourself See, yeah. self-love is when you go okay here's a sweetie you know here's here's a chocolate <laughs> you know you've been good and let's do my meals let's go to the sauna let's have a massage yeah it's like right. giving yourself or a treat right. or yeah it's not nothing good. wrong with it nothing wrong with it but but like i it's really hard to describe i mean unconditional love is it's fine it's everything is it you know you've you you're okay in who you are right now as everything is you know you're still breathing yeah, that's 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 the self in method based on it's like i have this three steps short uh, describe and it's first like okay what am i feeling at this moment what am i sensing and then you go towards that feeling and also if it's sadness or frustration or anger it's like you say to yourself it's okay because we mm. say to our best friends a mother says it to her child uh, but it's really important we learn to say it i i believe to ourselves because we are gonna live for the rest of our lives with ourselves yeah and yeah you know i mean it just reminds me of um uh being uh, after emma died and i hang out with people and if if they were trying to make me feel better i never wanted mm. to see them again i just <laughs> wanted to you know it's like just don't just don't try and make me feel better. There's no way I want to feel better right now. You would feel worse. You would I will feel worse start. or I will start to um, break up a relationship that I'm having with myself of accepting myself as feeling bad. It's okay that I feel, you know, um, awful, you know, like the worst, the pits. It's, yeah. it's okay. And, and I would hang out, funnily enough, I was hanging out with, very depressed people because they weren't trying to make me feel better and i i'm like good that's fine just just don't you accept me as i am and i really can't think of anything nicer right now and then we we just not try to do that much for each other or change each other um yeah. in that space and i felt like held in that in the space there was no physical holding um but um, you know, I definitely felt better. And um, have you and exactly? That's that's what a yeah, beautiful. That's that's also what I mean with with learning to to not that we become an island and we do it all alone because we need people. But if we can give that to ourselves too, and I if some days it's also harder for me than other days, but uh, to you know give yourself the comfort also like it's okay. Do you have um, have you because you've you've I know that your background is in. Um, in teaching and, and education, I, I think. Um, do you have, um, have you developed like groups or, you know, where people try and apply the method to with each other or, or have like a meetup group? Is well, I, I, I started to give workshops, but um, I'm, I'm actually at, at the moment in Dutch making an online program, which I would love to uh, also make it in English. Because I would, I mean, all over the world there, I think it's, it's lovely to uh, <laughs> spread the message of self-acceptance and, and like how you called it, universal love. And, uh, Un uh, unconditional uh, love. Well, I mean, you know, the other thing is, is, is this, um, this whole thing is just a, as applicable to mind control and, and um, the people that get involved in cults. It's, exact, it's mm -hmm. totally applicable. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think that's, I mean, from my point of view, I think that's definitely be an interesting area to, um, to yeah, you know, it's the whole, actually it's this society that, that, that teaches us to find, uh, like the joy, the, the, the happiness in stuff or in people or in, you know, external things, things without, with, um, out of, outside of ourselves. And, and, um, if you, if you really, uh, get a bit extreme in that um it's i think very important to uh to find the rest and acceptance in ourselves as we are and not that we don't have goals anymore hmm. but i think it's it's something for the 
for the whole world to uh, to re to to find now, <laughs> especially in this Corona time. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's funny. I'm just. I'm just wondering how long this is going to last with the corona. But, but um, what I wanted to ask you is, do you have, having had these um, workshops that you're running, have you had people come up to you and um, feel like, you, if you like, I would say like a, a confirmation experience where they said like, you have saved me. Like this, just hearing your story has totally woken me up or it has uh, given me the insight that I needed. Well, one, one lady who read my book, uh, I got more messages at that time, but the first book about the story, which I wanted to share because I knew there were also more uh, people in an unhealthy relationship like that and they could recognize themselves. Because when I was in this relationship, I... I did not know, but when I got out, I knew, you know, so, um, yeah. So this lady was pregnant and she, she, she left the relationship because she felt this was the last sign yeah. and then she really had to go undercover. You know what I mean? So she yeah, really yeah. had to, uh, and also in the workshops, there were several people who attained it, who, who were in a toxic relationship before like this as well. Mm. um yeah for sure for sure they 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 and and also one girl attained the workshop actually she she had feelings of depression and the mother messaged me afterwards because she came with her mm. uh, in the workshop and then she said uh, we she would love to maybe even do personal sessions with you because the acceptance is so important she finally mm. felt for the first time like it's yeah. okay you feel these feelings you know what i mean like tell people that it can be quite refreshing because some you know it's 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 such an it's such a um, obvious thing in so many ways and now in psychotherapy they're starting to talk about it but i do feel like it's it's almost spiritual do you know what i mean and, and mm. i don't mean that i mean you're the last person to dress up in white clothes and to float across the room. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, it's like, okay, make friends with the moment right now and with whatever you're feeling, because you don't have anything else, honestly, right now, that is all you have. And I'll be with you. I'll just sit there with you and I'll be okay with that. Exactly. That's all yeah, I have wonderful. as well. That's all I have. I don't have anything else. Um, yeah, but isn't it, isn't that, I mean, we, we have the answers inside ourselves as well. Most of the times, right? Nobody is stupid. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, the more I'm involved in energy work, I think there's also, I think that acceptance relaxes something in us and opens a, I, I believe it opens a dimension to uh, a deeper dimension to who we are and we get connected yeah. and some people connect some people like a Zen and they connect with the, the infinite now and there's nothing. It's just, everything's fine, you know? And some people, they feel energy or angels or, or whatever. And, and I just say, yeah, good on you, whatever. Yeah, good. exactly. It's uh, it's all good. It's all, uh, everybody has their own way. And it, I guess that's fine too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. um, people can connect with you. If yeah, they want to. I am on Instagram on Shanti Shakes and also on Facebook. And um, I'm also starting with with I've recently started with personal sessions. So if people are really high. Uh, and and, uh, and so who needs who comes to you for personal? Well, sessions mostly uh, people who are also leaving a relationship that's. And it's, you know, eating them after if they're out of it or, and, or still in it and it was unhealthy and all their attention still is going to that person, for mm. example. And it's difficult to let go. I could totally see a podcast here, 
Shanti. I've got to say, like, wouldn't it be brilliant to to be telling the stories uh, of mm. of people and how they got into the situations and how they got out and then how they feel and how they're making making love with themselves? That mm -hmm. sounds so funny, but I mean, like, really, I I mean, making finding the love in themselves more and more yeah absolutely absolutely because it's it is within and uh yeah it would be amazing to make a podcast like that too yeah yeah that we'll have to, i'm sure that i'm because i feel like there are podcasts which are about like abusive relationships and cults and everything else but not the whole circle about like this mm. is this is actually what it's really about um nobody's nobody's trying to make you drink any kool-aid with shanty shakes like the, uh, do you know the expression "drink the Kool Aid"? No, I, what does it mean? Yeah, well, so there was a guy called Jim Jones, and he started a cult, and um, he got everybody to follow him, and eventually got everybody to drink some drink, and the drink was poisonous, and it was Kool Aid, and he mm -hmm. killed all his people, and so wow. so there's an expression of like drinking the Kool Aid is like the 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 guru says do this and you just do whatever the guru says even kill yourself yeah so wow, but yeah, there's no kool-aid you know what i mean like it's just the kool-aid is love yourself you are your greatest teacher um and accept yes. yourself and if you find if you find another teacher outside you found yeah. them and you can leave them anytime you like Exactly. And that's also how I still have my teachers, you know what I mean? In life, life is, and I think also people around me are teachers, but the friends and the family are the biggest. But I mean, I also learned from, for example, Joe Dispenza or Eckhart Tolle. And I love right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a teacher. Exactly. Exactly. Darling, love you. You're fantastic. I, I'm sure you are. people Thanks. are going to like love what you've got to say. Mm, thanks. Thank you for inviting me. It was amazing to to uh, to share our story and uh, yeah. I think we Great. nailed it. Yes. I think we finally got it, don't you? Yeah, it feels uh, really. It, this one really felt like a flow and easy, and both our stories a bit in it. Like it's more a conversation than an interview. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Like so I'm, I have to tell you <laughs> that, that suddenly Zoom signed me out. Oh, no. Yeah, in the middle. And so I don't know if it's going to store it. But I, I just said, okay, I'm not going to stop this. I'm just going to, But you know. I can share content, it says. Only the host. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Hmm. So when I end the meeting, it's going gonna, it's gonna to...